నాకైతే ఆశ్చర్యం వేస్తుంది ఎన్ని కంప్లైంట్ చేసిన కడానాల్ వెంకటేశ్వర స్వామి పవిత్రతను దెబ్బతీశారు ఎన్నోసార్లు చెప్పాను అక్కడ ఎంత దుర్మార్గంగా ప్రయత్నం చేశారంటే అంత దుర్మార్గంగా ప్రవర్తించారు కడాన అన్న దానంలో క్వాలిటీ ఆఫ్ ఫుడ్ లేకుండా చేశారు దేవుని దగ్గర పెట్టే ప్రసాదం అపవిత్రం చేసే విధంగా ఓసారి బాధ వేస్తుంది నాసి రకమైన ఇంగ్రీడియంట్సే కాకుండా ఎనిమల్ ఫ్యాట్ కూడా వాడారని This is heinous crime. This cannot be uh, forgiven at any cost. This is a crime that has to be severely punished and no such thing should happen again. You know, temples should be allowed to be ma- managed by religious leaders, spiritual leaders. And, it, you know, it cannot go in the hands of some uh, bureaucrats and some politicians, some uh, industrialists who... just uh, whose idea is not to uh, to you know promote bhakti or devotion but uh, you know make money out of this during the tenure of uh, mr jagannath reddy i think um it was public knowledge i don't think it was even a secret that proselytization was heavily supported by the establishment under his rule uh to the extent that there were ministers from his cabinet who have made public statements to the effect that at least 20 to 25% of the population stood converted to christianity and there are several videos available of uh, i would say freelance pastors and missionaries constantly roaming the streets hoping to get converts and hoping to harvest souls on a daily basis government must free our temples of control and they must leave it to the devotees to manage their institutions just as other communities can manage their institutions hindus can do, do it as well now this is his statement on this entire laddu controversy he says devotees consuming beef tallow in the temple prasadam is beyond disgusting this is why temple should be run by devotees not by government administrations where there is no devotion there shall be no sanctity time the hindu temples are run by devout hindus not by government administration joining us now is uh, sadguru ji uh, of the isha foundation and he is somebody who uh, has also very actively spoken about uh, the need for uh, the tamil nadu government to let go of the control over hindu temples or hindu inst- religious institutions uh, sadguru ji let me start uh, with your thought because uh, and we we here have said that it's time to take the right stand to free hindu temples but let me understand from you so let me uh, bring a little historical perspective to how these things have happened uh it all started with uh, a regulation a madras regulation it was called the madras regulation of uh, 1817 so this was done by east india company not even by the british government then by 1840 it uh, uh, you know the resistance built up within their own society that christian men were managing pagan temples so resistance came up in uh, england so in 1840 they wanted to give it back so they uh, put out a directive and said okay hand it over to the trustees but then by then they had taken over trusts were dismantled all this had happened so few main temples they handed over by 1845 most of the temples were handed over important ones then they passed a religious endowment act in 1863 with which they made a complete handover of the religious institutions and endowments back to the hindu community then in 1925 they passed a madras religious and charitable endowment act this included all religions by now this was a strategy to stem the independence movement in the country and they found whether it's a mosque or a church or a temple all of these things were becoming hubs of for people to meet and you know come together and uh, act so they tried to take over all religious institutions but there was a vigorous resistance from the minorities so they excluded them and brought the act only for the hindus as a uh, it was called as the hindu endowment act hindu temple and endowment act whatever it was called then further they tightened the screws in 1935 that they could give uh, uh, you know like a notification to any temple to take it over and uh, this is all happening before independence but post independence in 1951 
they passed this uh, uh, law of Hindu Religious and Chari Charitable Endowment Acts 1951. And many provisions of this 1951 act were struck down, both by the Madras High Court and the Supreme Court. So during the Kamaraj era in 1959, they passed another… this uh, Tamil Nadu Hindu Religious and Charitable Endowment Act was passed, which is still in operation right now. With this, over 37,000 temples are in government control. So what is the issue here? The issue is, one thing is, it's a disgrace that in a secular country, that uh, one uh, community… I mean, if you say this in any other country, if you mention this, nobody will believe you. Nobody will believe in India, religious institutions are managed by the government. So, yeah. secular institutions means they should have no business with any… Uh, any religious institution. When I… S when we talk about the Hindu temples, immediately there's a whole group of people who'll say, then take over churches also, take over mosques also. I'm saying the government has no business to touch a mosque or a church or a temple or a gurdwara or anything for that matter. Right now, there is one problem, so let us multiply the problem. That is not a solution, all right? The important thing is, the devotees should manage the temple because fundamentally the Indian temples were not created as places of prayer. There is no single person leading a prayer for a group of people. It is largely different types of energy centers where people can go soak themselves in that energy, whatever, whether you believe or not, it is true for millions and millions of people. For millennia, it has been the experience of people. Whether you believe, you don't believe, that is your issue. But in terms of basic human rights, this must happen. In terms of constitutional rights as fundamental rights, this must happen. But now there's a whole lot of people arguing, their argument is generally, but it was under kings and kings are also government, so it was always under government. This is not true because kings were devotees. Kings were very strong devotees to such a point, in many kingdoms, the deity was the king. The king was a divan or a minister for the deity. So always the deity ruled, only in the deity's name he ruled the country. So they were a different people altogether and there also the contributions came from the people to build the temples. Above all, these are… especially the South Indian temples, the, Mam, the Tamil Nadu temples particularly, they are magnificent creations of engineering and architecture. If you see what they have done thousand uh, years ago, twelve hundred, fifteen years… Uh, fifteen hundred years ago, you will feel proud of being human because it's absolutely incredible in terms of engineering. The mastery of engineering that they had and how they built these structures is too phenomenal. But they're all being systematically being run down, all the artifacts are being stolen, they're all mostly gone. Because people who have no feeling, no heart for the temple are managing the temple. And uh, there are various aspects, economic aspects to it, that is not my interest. My interest is fundamentally, if you want this country to move ahead, you don't discriminate between people. Everybody should have the same rights. This is the whole thing, uh, one country, one law, all this we are talking everywhere, but it's not happening in a very fundamental way. So Tamil Nadu temples have to be released because the tightest endowment act probably is in Tamil Nadu. In other states, maybe it's a little more lax, but even that should not be there, that's a different matter. But here it's a proper control. Even if you build a new temple, and if it becomes a popular temple, government will send a notification to take it over. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. You can't do this in any country. I'm saying even in countries like Russia or China, you don't do these things. How can you do this in a country like India, which is a secular nation, which is a democratically elected leadership, and our constitution gives absolute right for everybody to practice their religion, irrespective of uh, what faith they are. You can even start a new faith and practice it, I'm saying. It's not that the existing faiths. You can start any new faith and practice it. When this is the case, the majority population's uh, places of worship or uh, their temples are being managed by the government is a very shameful thing. Hmm. But the reality is, Sadhguruji, irrespective of the political party, the eyes are always on the temples.
and uh, if you from left to right of the political spectrum left in kerala if you look at aidmk dmk you know successively in tamil nadu you look at tdp ysrc congress in in andhra pradesh if you look at uh, why are, you know the trs in telangana or the bjp in uttarakhand everywhere political parties immediately want to jump on on onto the temple devasams and temple boards and in its management is it purely money or is it something else oh uh, see uh... See, I don't want this to be looked at it from the political spectrum. As you said, no party is exempt, all of them have been involved in this. This is a kind of a plunder. I don't even care about the plunder, a whole lot of people are worried about the money and the property. My concern is, uh, a sacred space has been desecrated systematically. And aesthetic aspect of these temples are so phenomenal, but today if you go to many of the... Tamil Nadu temples, stone carvings, okay? I'm saying they carved not soapstone or marble as it's done in North India or soapstone in Karnataka. Here we carved granite, very hard stone into exquisite art. And you know what they did? They put silver paint on it, oil paint, enamel paint for the entire stone carvings. It's somebody, uh, some government officer's idea of aesthetic. What do you do for this kind of thing? This kind of desecration and temple processes have been changed and uh, without taking into the other aspects, the science of temple, uh, temple building, they've made changes, they've put walls here and there. Aesthetics is being uh, completely, you know, massacred really. So my concern is temple is being destroyed. Yes, property and wealth and gold attached to it, I think the British took away most of it anyway. What was left, other people are taking it. Um, that is one aspect, yes, for the temple to be a living temple, for it to be managed well, it needs some wealth for itself to manage, but even that is not even my concern. My concern is, first of all, of fundamental rights, what is in, you know, in the constitution, why is it that we don't have those fundamental rights? And above all, these are not something that you can once again build. These are not something that you can simply create tomorrow morning. This is something which has taken generations of people to build in a certain way, in a, particularly in Tamil Nadu. See, you, we must understand the context of this. These are called temple towns, not because there is a temple. First the temple, they built the temple. People who built these magnificent temples, they themselves lived in hutments, all right? They didn't care how they live. This is the sense of devotion with which this has come. Many of the places where these granite temples, massive granite temples have been built, there is no stone. They have transported it like 300, 400 kilometers away. When there were no trucks, when there were no cranes, these tons and tons of granite they brought and they carved and they put it up, this has taken two, three generations of work. And the way it was consecrated, you know, like for example, Chidambaram temple is consecrated with Patanjali Maharishi, how can you destroy that? There are many other temples, uh, consecrated by Agastya Muni. How can you destroy that? This is a legacy you cannot destroy. But unfortunately, a lot of damage has been done. I think time has come. It should be released. Now people are saying, oh, then uh, all kinds of corruption will happen. It is absolutely ridiculous and insulting to say that the majority community doesn't have a handful of people who have the necessary brains and integrity to manage a temple. When when today we are in a time where we are thinking in terms of government should not manage an airline, it should not manage airports, it, muna, it should not manage ports, it should not manage industry, business, mining, everything should be given to the people to manage in terms of private entities. Temples, somehow government is qualified to manage, how come? It's just ridiculous. Because you, you mentioned the Chidambaram temple, Sadhguruji. 2014, the Honorable Supreme Court had passed a landmark judgment and I spoke to Dr. Swami also, Subramanian Swami, who had argued that case. It is a case which is pending in court since 1886 and the court very clearly came out and said that temple should be managed by priests and not by government. The court also said that the priests constitute a religious denomination and their rights are to be preserved and protected from any invasion by the state. But despite that, this goes on. The, the court also said if there is maladministration or malpractice, you set it right and give it back to the people again. But so nobody if, is following. If there is any kind of malpractice in a given institution, 
all these institutions, any kind of charitable trust or a religious trust comes under the Indian law. So if there is any malpractice, as if there is a malpractice in a business or in a media house or in an industry or in a trust, there are laws. There is IPC to handle any crime that happens. You don't take over everything simply because there is some malpractice in one or two institutions. Yes, it can happen. It is happening in every aspect of life, isn't it? Yes. But why is it that uh, we as Hindus in this country… See, as I said in 1925, unfortunately, they passed a law to take all the religious institutions, the British including mosques and churches and temples and everything, gurudwaras. But they released the other two because they went on the street. Unfortunately, we are setting this trend. If you want any kind of justice, you have to burn something on the street. This is an unfortunate way to manage a nation. When we make an appeal, please look at it properly. Why? Do you want people to come on the streets and burn things? We don't want to go that way. That is not our way of doing things. I'm just raising an issue. It is for the government to act or let people protest, then we will do. What kind of nonsense is that? It is simply unfair that only if you dismantle the country in some way, you will act. Only if we distort the country in some way, only if you give trouble to everybody's life, okay, block the highway, block rail roko, rasta roko, bijli loko, something you do, then you will act. Please do not take the country in this direction, let us be a law-abiding nation. When a sensible appeal is made, everybody should look at it. I'm saying everybody, irrespective of which party you belong to, what position you hold, anybody who is in some kind of administrative position has to look at this. This is absolutely unfair. In my opinion, this amounts to kind of apartheid, you know? It is. It does, to be discriminated in a country where yeah. uh, we are actually a majority by, you know… No, religion. I'm saying it doesn't even matter whether you're majority or minority, for anybody. I'm saying even if you take over mosques or gurdwaras or churches, I would say the same thing, because yeah. fundamentally it's wrong. Yeah, but, but this wrong has been perpetrated for decades and decades and it's coming on from the… you know… So, what is the solution? Are you willing to get all the matadishas, all the, you know, pitadishas together, no, all no, the, you I'm, know, I'm minds together we, we don't even and have to make to, a collective demand? We… we don't have to go there. I'm saying, why should we come together and cause some disturbance? Then only you will act. I'm just making an appeal. Let it come to everybody's notice. Every sensible… Uh, Indian must act on this, it doesn't matter which community you belong to, all right? I am not a regular temple-going person, I am not a temple-going person. I am saying this because it's a glaring injustice in your face. It, it is simply there for everybody to see. So out of somebody's greed, what was done in colonial era, for what purposes it was done, everybody knows. We don't have to go into that. It is just that yesterday, uh, because you mentioned America, Yesterday, one uh, poet, uh, Amanda, whatever her name, uh, Gorman, yeah. uh, she was reading a poem, in that she said one line, I thought it was fantastic. She said, just is, everything is just is the way it is, is not just is, all right? <laughs> this is just is from the British era, and this is not just is, this is absolute injustice. True, but, but let me ask you, it's not there even in the chetana or the conscience of the people. How is that going to happen? Because yes, everybody because wants the Hindu vote, everybody talks about welfare of certain groups of uh, communities and sections of people, but this injustice seems to be lost on everybody else. Temples are also a source for keeping our culture alive, our traditions alive, you know, uh, passing on historical knowledge, but all of that is also getting lost. Oh, uh, not just lost, systematically being eliminated, not just being lost. See, temples were centers of craft, art, music, everything at one time. Well, you… how far you can revive that, what you can do, I'm saying, in every city, in every town, wherever the temples are there, or in every state, let's say we start… see, because this is a complex issue, it can't be all some thirty-six thousand temples can't be handed over tomorrow morning, all right? So you have to form a state-level board of the community, with resp responsible people who are not coming there for the money that is there or whatever wealth that is there. There are people who are successful, who don't care about what the temple has, there is some devotion in their hearts. You form a trust of that kind of people for the state 
and then for every city, every district, whatever you form, more trust. This is a long process, it's not going to happen tomorrow. I don't mind if it takes four years or five years, but it, the process should begin at least. By intent, the intent at least you must show. I can understand the process is complex, it needs to be done in a graduated way. If you don't do it in a calibrated way, it can, you know, it can become a mess. So, isn't there a solution for this? Definitely there is a solution. When you can hand over Air India to somebody, you can do this very easily. It is not a commercial operation. Anyway, even now the temple runs because the devotees are coming, not because government is advertising for the temple. There is no commerce involved, there is no marketing involved, people will anyway come. Right now, most temples are kept in, kept in such a way that even a devotee would not want to go there. That is how it is kept. But uh, w w you're saying it'll take some time. I'm just saying in, th in, in Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam, Chidambaram Temple, Padmanabha Swami Temple, every temple, every, every state in our country has temples which are a uh, huge throngs of devotees who go there. And that's what gets the state to want to control them because they say we have to control the administration, otherwise uh, you will not be able to handle the people and the flow of devotees. <laughs> that's the reason given. The state needs to be there to ensure that this is done. In Uttarakhand, 500 temples have been taken over. From the chief minister downwards, everybody is sitting there, they're saying we want to improve, we want to connect the char dhams and that's why we are doing it. Uh... See, they, they, if, if they want, they can… government-initiated trust can be formed. If you want, you can put one IAS officer on it to ensure everything is okay, all right? Till, let us say, for the next ten years or fifteen years, you can put an IAS officer there, then slowly you can withdraw. Or if it's necessary forever, he can be there. But the temple should be managed by devotees because there is a certain process. See, all temples are not same, it's not like… See, for example, with every other religion, in all the gurudwaras, same thing will be happening. In all the mosques, same thing will happen. In all the churches, same thing will happen, all right? Minor differences, but essentially same thing. But here it's not like that. It's a whole world by itself. A Devi temple is one way, a Shiva temple another way, Vishnu temple another way, Krishna, Rama, very, very different, I'm saying. Everything is different. That is the beauty of this culture, that we are so essentially different, but we have no issues. You're taking that for granted, just is. <laughs> this is how it's been. Well, it's been like this since uh, 1800, so what is the problem? We can just continue like this into 22nd century. No, I think it must change. It must change. I agree, it must change. But if hat jodke, appeal karke, if it doesn't change, then it has to come from the people. And a large mass will have to come. And for that, they will have to understand the impact of what is happening, Sadhguruji. See, the important… the important thing is right now, uh, Tamil Nadu is going in for election. So, mm -hmm. recently, three days ago, during the Pongal event when we had, some young man stood up and asked me, Sadhguru, uh, whom should I vote for? I said, see, who you vote for, I will not tell you. You can vote for whoever you want. I'll never tell anybody who they should vote for. But I let me tell you who I vote for. So, I listed out five points. Let me not go through all the five points. Because one is about Kaveri, one is about the farmers, one is about industry, one is about investments, one is about corruption, like this. And the last one is about the temples. I said, any party which promises, we will start up… I'm not an impractical person, I'm saying tomorrow morning change it. No, you start the process. You start the process, let it start happening. And anybody who promises, they will start the process. Within six months of coming to power, my vote is for them. It's up to you to decide. Who, your vote, where it goes. So, a democratic nation means during the time of election, you can affect changes, all right? People should take up this responsibility. True, well said, sir. Well said, that's what we said. Should it become a poll issue? Should the Hindu vote go to those who will free the temples along with making the promises on the other four or five points that you talked about? Thank you very, very Thank much, Sadhguruji. Always you. a pleasure speaking to you. Namaskar.